Ball machines. With ball machines, a couple things. One, it'd be great if you used a ball machine with a partner. While they're picking up balls, you could be hitting. You could get three players on a court with a ball machine. One player, for example, could be hitting a forehand ground stroke cross court. And then off the cross court shot, one partner is hitting a volley. The other person, the third person is picking balls up. When a ball is hit, there's three physical characteristics. There is speed, there is spin, there is trajectory. So when you make the adjustments with a ball machine, it's the same thing. Speed, spin, and trajectory. Just like people with a slugfest against the backboard, what they want to do is have the ball come out as fast as possible. Many times a young player trying to learn their strokes, or even an old player is trying to change their strokes, let the ball bounce twice. It doesn't have to come out fast. You can have several players hit off a ball machine at one time where they're just going to hit, hold, hold or finish till the ball hits the fence. Because there's too many times the ball's coming fast and really the player cannot slow down and self-evaluate. Typically what players do as well is they just have the ball machine going straight ahead. For example, we have this ball machine set up where it's going at an angle. Connor's going to hit a backhand volley. Many times the passing shot's coming in cross court. To change the direction of the ball, you need a power source. When you hit a volley, your power sources are going to be the speed of the incoming ball and your movement forward. But just think, for example, if someone's going to change the direction of the ball and they have a continental grip, where now the racket face is open, and they have their right arm bent, and they have their left arm down, it's going to be very, very difficult to do. You want to set up the interval with a ball machine where it makes it realistic, where volleys, for the most part, really hit with the legs. Now, we're just trying to make sure he has the right backhand grip, the arm is straight. We can even have him be in one position where he's not moving. But we have the ball machine set up where he has time to hit, touch the net, and then go jog backwards, and then go again and again and again. Repetition, mother of skill. We're going to ask Connor if you just hit your backhand volley right up to the percentage post. And then maybe later we could change it where he's going to close in and he's going to angle it. But for right now, just take your backhand volley down the line. Now back up. Split step, go again. Move through the volley. Keep that racket head up. Now his backhand volley is going to be a plus, a minus, or an IP. And we want to have him stick it. When people hear the term stick the volley, it means you're getting hit by a stick. So you just come in and go for it. Now, champions, is he going to be willing to come out and put the extra time on hitting a ball machine? Ball machines can be expensive. There's so many different ways to get a ball machine. Teaching pros, they can set up a ball machine club where, say, 25, 50 people pay so much money per month to have unlimited use of the ball machine. But you want to get to the point where you have several ball machines, different types. Now that volley landed short. Let's see you hit three more volleys. Let me see you aim for the green. Hit the ball long. But have the racket face flat. Go bigger. Go bigger. Go home. Ready? Let me see you aim for the fence. And if he gets the racket face vertical, gravity is going to be on his side. Why most people miss on the volley is the racket face is open. So again, those are just a few thoughts on how to use a ball machine.